Today we're gonna to talk about bioidentical progesterone benefits in perimenopause. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer, thanks so much and welcome to my channel. Thanks if this is your first time here, I appreciate you being here. If you're coming back, thanks so much for your support and Frank, thanks for coming back. I am a functional medicine doctor, family doctor, and registered dietitian, and I post on this channel videos about um, functional medicine, in particular um, perimenopause lately. I post on hormone balance and I work with patients every single day on hormone balance and also on gut balance and gut um, gut microbiome and SIBO, and you can check out some of my other videos on that. Lately, in the past few months, I've been focusing on perimenopause, and that is the time when women um, start to have some erratic hormone balance and tend to be a little bit estrogen dominant in the beginning when the progesterone declines in the beginning and then their estrogen falls towards the end. And then eventually they hit menopause when they go a year without a period, but perimenopause all the years leading up to that. And it's not talked enough about, it's not talked about enough in doctor's offices. So that's why I'm here to talk more about it in my experience in both my personal experience and my experience with my patients in perimenopause. So one thing that comes up quite a bit is progesterone. Bioidenticals come up quite a bit too, but progesterone in particular, because that's one thing that can be very useful in perimenopause, because as I said, your progesterone does start to decline uh, quite significantly in perimenopause. So I work with women on trying to figure out is, peri is progesterone right for them in perimenopause when we talk about adding hormones and we talk about not being able to sleep, having irregular periods, spotting in between periods. That's when progesterone can be very helpful. Also, sometimes with the mood irregularities and the mood swings that happen in perimenopause, it can be helpful. So let's talk about the different types of progesterone. So there is progesterone that is n not really progesterone, that is called a, it's called progesterone, but it's a progestin. And those are the ones that were, you know, originally when back in the early 2000s, when I went into medical school, um, they had taken away women's, but bi not bioidentical, but taken away their hormone replacement therapy. And it was mainly because it was these fake progestins and um, estrogen kind of combos made from horse urine and um, just not the best match for women. And they were finding some safety issues with that. So then bioidentical hormones became an alternative kind of thing. And now they're more accepted in the regular medicine kind of world as well. And um, the difference with those is those more match um, chemically what women make in their own body. And they're, they're based, they're made from plant products, but they're, um, they match more what we, we make and so less dangerous to the body. So what you want to avoid is progestins, which would be those, the same uh, kind of progesterone or fake progesterone that's found in birth control pills but it's found at a much higher level in the bioidentical, I mean, not bioidentical, in the progestins. Now, bioidentical progesterone, like I said, comes from a plant, more chemically matches what we have in our systems when we're still having regular hormone production and um, is safer for our bodies. So the Pharmaceutical brands, there's not a lot of brands of progesterone that are bioidentical, but there is Prometrium. And that's a capsule, it's a gelatin capsule, has a lot of fillers and additives that if you're very sensitive, you might not tolerate it well, but it comes in only 100 or 200. And then there's also um, the compounding pharmacies make bioidentical progesterone. Now that can be controversial and we know that a lot of um, non-integrative, non-functional providers um, would not recommend compounded. But when I work with compounded pharmacies, I work with those that have been inspected and that are trusted and are regulated, basically. Now, they are not regulated in the same way that regular pharmacies are. That's always the case, but that's why OB-GYNs maybe and regular doctors, um, primary care doctors that aren't integrated or functional might not 
want to use compounding pharmacies. But the benefit of using compounding pharmacies is that you can use different types of progesterone. Now, I don't usually use progesterone cream. It's uh, very subtle its effect and it doesn't always get to where we need it to go as far as getting absorbed and and used properly. A lot of times when I start bioidentical progesterone for women in perimenopause it is because they're not sleeping well, maybe for brain fog, maybe for mood swings, maybe for spotting and I find that if they need it for sleeping or brain function or to cross the blood brain barrier, they would need the, um, the, the oral progesterone. Now there's even different types of that. There are um, the sublingual that can melt under your tongue. Um, there's a solid capsule or a solid tablet that is sustained release or sustained release capsules or regular capsules and immediate release capsules. Everyone is different and every woman feels better on a, not every woman is sensitive, but some women are sensitive to certain types and feel better on other types of oral progesterone than the one versus another. So we may have to um, try different things. And, and that's kind of what you need to keep in mind if you're thinking of working with your provider and starting bioidentical progesterone is that you may have to try different delivery methods. You may have to try different doses. It has a U-shaped curve progesterone, so you can have some side effects from not having enough progesterone that can mimic the side effects of having too much progesterone. Very confusing in that way, but very interesting also. So what I find with side effects of progesterone, if it's just not the right dose for you, or maybe even not the right approach for you, are sometimes water retention, um, sore breasts, um, sometimes some irregular bleeding can happen when you either don't have enough progesterone or if you're taking too much progesterone. So any of those, you got to find your right balance with your provider. And speaking of that, I am not your healthcare provider. I don't know your individual history. I don't know if bioidentical progesterone is safe for you. If you've had a hormone receptor positive breast cancer, you want to talk to your doctor and your breast oncologist about bioidentical and if it's safe for you. You also, if you have that in your family history, you want to talk to your provider. Anytime you're considering, it's going to be a prescription anyway, but anytime you're considering taking bioidentical hormones or hormones, you want to talk to your doctor to make sure that it's safe for you and that you've explored all the options and the pros and cons. I can only tell you what I've done with myself and with my patients. So, but I have found that progesterone can be a game changer for sleep in particular brain function and mood changes and even sometimes energy levels. Now also circling back to if um, you have too much progesterone on board, you can also feel some fatigue. So you may want to, if you're taking it and feeling the sore breasts or fatigue or even more irritable on it or water retention or weight gain, the weight gain would be from the water retention. So talk to your doctor. Now, some women will experience weight loss, and that means they're probably on the right, if they needed to lose weight, on the right dose, um, or they're sleeping better, and then they're on the right dose. They're not too tired. They're on the right dose. So generally, um, we, the, like, Prometrium is available in 100 and 200, and that is the prescription at the regular pharmacy kind of progesterone. But generally, we start around that dose um, in perimenopause, maybe at like 75, but it does depend on the woman. And we would, if you're still cycling regularly and having those symptoms in the second half of your cycle where you can't sleep, the insomnia is really severe, or night sweats are really bad, that's another sign that you might need progesterone, then we'll do it in the second half of the cycle. If the periods are really irregular and you're towards the end of perimenopause, we may do it most of the days of the cycle with a three or four day break in there um, to give like the uterine lining a break there. I also recommend if you're going to start a bioidentical progesterone to um, get a, a baseline pelvic ultrasound, transvaginal pelvic ultrasound, and make sure your mammograms are up to date and stay up to date on those. And then, you know, yearly also get a pelvic ultrasound again yearly to look at the uterine lining and if it gets too thick to either cut back on your dose or stop it all together. But again, you have to work with your provider to find out what is right for you. I just find that bioidentical progesterone it can be a game changer in those situations of mood, sleep, um, night sweats, and um, even the, the spotting. 
So um, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you've tried that, you can look at some of my other videos that are related to sleep now, but stay tuned. I'm going to also tell you some um, natural options if you don't want to do bioidentical hormones, some kind of gateway kind of things that could help and, and maybe you don't need the bioidentical progesterone. But before I do that, make sure you check out our new blog, um, perimenopause.help. We have all these things covered in there. Not all of them covered yet. It's a brand new blog and we only have a you know, handful of blogs on there, maybe less than 10 at this point when I'm posting this video, but there will be more and more every week. And we try to cover all these topics. We have resources. The videos are on there too. It's just a great resource. If you're like, what did she say in that video? Or I wanna learn more about this. Um, it's all on perimenopause.help, so check that out. So moving back to natural options, I've talked about Vitex a lot on this channel, and that is chasteberry tree extract. That is a way to stimulate your natural estrogen production when it's abnormal, when it's declining in perimenopause. So that is an option. It is, you can get it on its own. Um, you can also get it in a blend of adaptogens, like I've talked about, like in FemGuard Balance, um, hormone Harmony, I think it's called, also the one that I reviewed from Happy Mammoth has it in there. Um, and there are some other options that I, I'll put in the description of brands that I trust. So you could try that if you'd like to not go into the actual hormone replacement therapy. If you've tried Vitex and haven't had luck with that, um, let me know in the comments. Let me know what else you have tried. And, and there are some other adaptogens that can be helpful. And I'd love to learn more about what you want to hear more about on the videos and the blog. So take a look in the description. There's some recommended brands on there. There's some playlists on there. And I so appreciate you watching. If you like this, please hit the like button and the subscribe. Hit the like, thumbs up, and the subscribe button to be um, to know to be subscribed to the channel, help the channel grow, and the the bell to be notified when I post new videos. So thanks so much for joining me. We'll see you next time.